We all know that James Charles has a huge teenage audience and some actually look up to him for let's say inspiration. With the previous sugar bear hair video, the supplement that I discussed, I thought I'd do another video kind of doing the same thing but this time it'll be sugar bear sleep instead because he really did promote kind of both. Even though on the website sugar bear claims that the sleep formula is actually indicated for ages 13 and up. I honestly don't feel comfortable recommending this sleep formula to this type of population. It's not just the ingredients that are problematic and as a healthcare professional, I can spot other issues with the sugar bear sleep formula. I'm a pharmacist. Welcome to Track MTM. Even though there are eight ingredients in the sugar bear sleep formula, I'm not gonna cover vitamin B6 because that's already covered in one of the Tati Halo Beauty video, which you can watch um, down in the description box. There'll be a link. That means we will go over seven different ingredients in this video. I know some people actually get really impatient when they watch my videos and unfortunately I feel like it's necessary to go over all the steps like I mentioned before the mechanism of actions, the health benefits, the side effects, and then the drug interactions and at the end I'll go over the questionable combinations. If you don't want to watch the whole video that's fine just jump to the end if that's all you're looking for. But for me, I feel like it's necessary to educate my viewers. So please don't be negative about it if you don't want to listen to the whole aspect of it. However, there is no strength on some of the ingredients because Sugar Bear did not disclose that information on their website. Maybe for an adult, I'm not too worried, but for children, definitely. I'm very particular with the dosage strength because there's, let's say, a huge difference. So let's say for children, how they will react to, let's say, milligrams versus grams. And that's just some like a whole different issue that I really don't want to get into. Their body cannot handle a lot of the things that an adult body can. It's very, very scary when you accidentally overdose a kid. Sometimes in the pharmacy, I would actually refuse to dispense a certain medication if I feel like it's inappropriate for the child. Trust me, there were times when I actually have to tell the doctor, hey, Fix this. If you don't, I will not fill the prescription until you do. It's for the safety of the patient and that's what I stand by 100% all the time. So let's get into it. The first ingredient is melatonin. Now it's a hormone in your brain which is stimulated by darkness and suppressed by light. Now you kind of understand why you need to turn the lights off when you go to bed, especially with the blue light that's in your cell phone, in your computer, those can pre prevent you from producing melatonin naturally. For health benefits, most likely it's going to be used for insomnia, jet lag, circadian rhythm, even with benzodiazepine withdrawal. So those of you with anxiety, most likely you would take a benzo. For side effects, most likely you're gonna get high blood pressure, kind of a headache, dizziness, abdominal pain, even some nausea. For drug interactions, definitely avoid melatonin with alcohol, okay? Not a good combo. It's actually gonna reduce the effectiveness of melatonin. And actually for melatonin, it's better if you take it after food. So typically, let's say after a meal. So usually people take it at night before they go to bed, right? So presumably you already had dinner. Melatonin can increase the effects of your blood thinners. So anti-coag, anti-platelets, causing more bleeding risk, especially if you take it within one hour apart. Please try to take that in consideration if you are on a blood thinner, take it further out so that way you have more room to work with. And melatonin can also inhibit the effects of anticonvulsants, which increases the risk of seizures. It's also known to increase the insulin resistance. So those of you who are diabetic means that your medication might not be control your blood sugars as effectively as they should with blood pressure medication. You might get an additive effect, so you might be dizzy, kind of lightheadedness, and you might faint. For my elder population, they're already more prone to falling, so that's not good. And like I say, benzodiazepines, which are most likely used in anxiety medications, can inhibit the synthesis and the release of endogenous melatonin in your body. Also kind of interfere with that immunosuppressive therapy. 
for those of you thinking of taking the sugar bear hair and the sugar bear sleep formula together please please don't because there's an interaction of melatonin with vitamin b12 which was in the hair formula there's actually a children warning label which should be used in low doses of melatonin only for short-term use due to potential risk in the daily dose of melatonin should be limited to three milligram for children and five milligram for adolescents and by short term I mean up to six weeks I mean it ranges anywhere from four to eight weeks but usually you really want to reconsider if you do want to give your child melatonin beyond eight weeks I mean it's not recommended so sugar bear sleep has about six milligrams of melatonin which is above the five milligram mark for adolescents so I honestly don't think that's a good start because you can't even choose the dose for your child usually melatonin comes in 0 0.3 one milligram three four five up to 10 milligram and typically i tell my patients to start at the very lowest strength and perhaps working your way up as necessary even for adults i mean starting off at six milligram is already high compared to children okay 10 milligrams like kind of up here you're already at six i mean it's kind of scary some evidence actually suggests that long-term use of melatonin can delay puberty in children it should not be used to promote sleep in healthy children. If your child is fine, then don't give them melatonin just in case. And just in case is not a good excuse. Oh no, it doesn't end there. I have more bad news for you. Okay, let's look into the pregnant category. Possibly unsafe for pregnant women. Hmm. High doses of melatonin actually inhibit ovulation, causing a contraceptive effect similar to what your birth controls are supposed to do. So if you're pregnant or wishing to become pregnant, it's best to avoid melatonin altogether. So who's gonna benefit the most from melatonin? Let's say the adult population, most likely the elder population, because let's say they can be deficient in melatonin, especially for those of you who are over 65, your body normally just can't produce that much melatonin anymore. That's why sometimes people say, well, as you grow older, you tend to sleep less it's not so much of the hours it's the melatonin that's produced by your body next ingredient is magnesium it's important for let's say normal bone structure general rule of thumb food that are high in fiber are most likely going to be high in magnesium for a normal healthy person chances of you getting a low level of magnesium it's very minimal very low for health benefits, most likely magnesium is going to be used for laxatives for when, let's say, when you get constipated. Or it can be used for the preparations of like surgical bowel movement or diagnostic procedures. Because it can be used as a laxative, some people can take this for weight loss. And also used by athletes to kind of increase the energy level and endurance. Let's say also work for asthma, allergic rhinitis, cardiovascular disease, so your heart problem, angina, arrhythmia, hypertension, cholesterol, even diabetes, and ADHD. Most likely you're gonna get side effects such as stomach upset, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Now if you have severe diarrhea, yeah, definitely stop your magnesium because it will continue to make the problem or your condition worse. Magnesium can also have a drug interactions with let's say calcium, vitamin D, zinc, can all decrease the absorption of magnesium. Oh yeah, did I mention that the cardipine or cardine, amlodipine, norvasc, like glimiparod, can increase your chance of a low blood sugar level and reduces the effectiveness of digoxin. Digoxin is a dirty drug. The next one is L-theanine. Now this is the major non-protein amino acid that is similar to glutamic acid structurally. For health benefits, it can help with anxiety, stress, depression, schizophrenia. Some people actually use it for ADHD, high blood pressure, enhancing the effects and tolerability of let's say chemotherapy. Again, for children, only recommended for short term because they can possibly get, let's say, headache, sleepiness, which is fine because that's what you want to do with a sleep formula. If they get kind of like subtle facial tics, compulsive, repetitive sound or movement, 
that is difficult to control, especially on their face, like a facial structure. For drug interactions, it can lower the blood pressure and spontaneously have an additive effects if you're taking, let's say, already on blood pressure medication. And also inhibit the effects of caffeine, okay? So don't take this sleep medication with caffeine. I mean, it's kind of common sense, right? Next one is lemon balm leaf. So it contains terpene, which are rapidly absorbed through the lungs and like the blood barrier in your brain. It can help with anxiety, stress, insomnia, restlessness, gastrointestinal problems, so your stomach issues, including like vomiting, dyspepsia, bloating, flatulence. Some people actually use it for, you know, headache, like a toothache, cramps, sores, ADHD. Again, short term in children. I cannot stress this enough. For side effects, you're looking at increased appetite, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, dizziness, and perhaps wheezing as well. For drug interactions, um, lemon balm actually has sedative effects, so don't take it with alcohol. It can also reduce the blood sugar level in combination with your diabetes medication. It can cause hypoglycemia. And lemon balm leaf actually has CNS depressant um, properties. There's going to be a problem if you take it with other sedatives. Let's say clonazepam, clonopin, lorazepam, ativan, phenobarbital, donatol, zopidem, Ambien for sleep. And it also has interactions with 5-HTP and valerian root, which are both in this formula, okay? So it's self-interact. It can also decrease the circulating thyroid stimulating hormone in your body and inhibit thyroid secretion. If you're on a thyroid medication, please don't take this. Like Thevothyroxine, Synthroid, Levacil, Leothyronin, Cytomel, or Armor Thyroid. Next ingredient is 5-HTP, stands for 5-hydroxytryptophan produced in your body. So tryptophan sounds familiar because that's typically in, you know, what we call the food coma after Thanksgiving. Tryptophan is in a lot of chicken, especially turkey. So you kind of tend to have that sleepiness effect. In 5-HTP, it's converted into the neurotransmitter serotonin in your CNS, in your brain. But for health benefits, of course, it's going to help with sleep, appetite, temperature, depression, anxiety, aggression, fibromyalgia, headache, migraine, ADHD. For side effects, it's possibly unsafe in large quantity. Doses, let's say, of 6 to 10 grams tend to have like gastrointestinal discomfort. And unfortunately, Sugar Bear did not disclose how many milligrams of 5-HTP in this formula. And other side effects can include nausea, vomiting, abdominal issues, diarrhea, and even anorexia. There's actually major interactions with, this, say, antidepressant drugs because they increase the risk of serotonin side effects, including serotonin syndrome, okay? So common ones are like, let's say, fluoxetine, Prozac that typically people take for depression, paroxetine, Paxil, sertraline, or Zoloft that's also very commonly dispensed in the pharmacy, and even amitriptyline. It's associated with, let's say, dizziness or solemnness, sedations with other CNS depression like dextromethorphan, it's usually in your cough syrup. And other like pain medication as well, tramadol is very popular, meperidine, dumerol, and valerian root in this formula also interact with 5-HTP I mentioned earlier, can cause sedative effects and drowsiness. Let's dive into valerian root plant that can grow just over six feet tall and is characterized by a very strong odor. It can help with insomnia, anxiety related issues, restlessness, sleep disturbances, depression, ADHD, mild tremors, epilepsy, muscle and joint pain, headache, migraine, stomach upset, and even menstrual cramp. And only short term in children. Actually for adults too. Side effects are most likely, let's say, mental dullness, cardiac issues, dry mouth, vivid dreams, morning, drowsiness, kind of like grogginess, drug interactions with sedative effects, 
including like CNS depressants, alcohol, benzodiazepines, alprazolam, Xanax, Dazepam, Valium, Midazolam, Versed, Temazepam, Restoril. Please don't take it together with this combination, especially with alcohol. Do not take it together with alcohol. The last ingredient is passion flower. Another flower looks marvelous. It looks so beautiful, I have to say. Very exotic with like climbing vines and woody stems. And it can grow up to 20 feet. I haven't seen this in real life. I've only seen it in pictures and it just looks amazing to me. It's gonna help with, let's say, insomnia again, ADHD, anxiety, alcoholism, seizures, opioid withdrawal, asthma, menopausal symptoms diarrhea, stress, even palpitation, cardiac arrhythmia, then you got fibromyalgia, muscle cramps as well. Side effects, cannot stress this enough, only short term in children, up to about maybe 800 milligram daily for let's say short term, meaning eight weeks maximum, that's about two months. Sugar Bear doesn't release how many milligrams in this formula. It's actually unsafe for pregnant women to consume passion flower especially in the first and second trimester. There's actually risk for premature rupture of the cell membrane. It's scary because you don't want your cell membrane to erupt because that's not gonna protect your fetus. Other side effects include dizziness, confusion, sedation, hypersensitivity. I feel like the drug interactions have a general theme of having additional sedative effects. And of course, of course, it's gonna interact with 5-HTP in the valerian root in this formula. Okay, final round. As promised, I'm gonna discuss about the questionable combinations in this formula, and there are about six. First is lemon balm leaf with 5-HTP, or 5-hydroxy tryptophan. It's gonna have sedative effects. Second one is lemon balm leaf with the valerian root. Same thing, sedative effects. With the 5-HTP and valerian root in combination, as I mentioned before. So sedation, what I mean by that, it's like, you know, you kind of get drowsy, grogginess, and that's the theme for this whole sugar bear sleep formula. And for valerian root with melatonin, passion flower with 5-HTP, and also passion flower with valerian root. So pretty much all these questionable combinations are gonna have sedative effects. But you might think, well, that's a sleep formula. Do, don't I want to be sedated so I can go to sleep? Not necessarily, because one, for children, that's not safe. I mean, you don't want them to be groggy and kind of drowsy all the time, right? Children who need it for short term, because I'm afraid it's gonna stop producing melatonin in your body. Second of all, for the elder population, that can be problematic because they're already prone to fall. And when they fall, th there are a lot of things that can happen. They can break their hip and they can get hospitalized. They can probably die. So for an elder to have medications that are, you know, very drowsy, sedative, it's not a good idea. I don't recommend a lot of sleep medication with this, you know, the, the adult the elder population so it can get problematic for them. What I recommend is probably as needed basis, so PRN, only when they need it, okay? So melatonin, taking it time after time, not a good idea. So in final closing, if you've tried this product, it works for you, I'm glad. However, if you're wondering if you should get started and wondering if you can give this to your kid, please don't, just don't. don't recommend it you're not missing out on much it's not good for your kid in the long term anyway so why bother please don't let FOMO the fear of missing out get the best of you or makes you do something that can be damaging for your health in the long run okay thank you for tuning in please subscribe thumbs up this video for more tips in the future you guys have a great day now bye bye